Good evening, and welcome to this candidate forum of the Saratoga City Council. This webinar is being sponsored by the League of Women Voters of Southwest Santa Clara Valley, which covers the cities of Campbell, Los Gatos, Montecerino, and Saratoga. The League of Women Voters is a national organization that provides nonpartisan voter services and does not endorse or oppose any political party or candidate. But we do advocate when we have studied an issue such as education and have developed a position on it. This webinar is being recorded and will be posted on our local league's website and other social media sites. My name is Eleanor Yick, current president of the Southwest Santa Clara Valley League and the moderator for tonight's forum. I am pleased to welcome and introduce the candidates who are running for the two open seats on the Saratoga City Council. Candidates, would you please put your video on now? Thank you and welcome. I'd like to introduce the candidates, Bilal Aftab, Doug Case, John Fitzpatrick, Cookie Fitzsimmons, Renee Pacquier, and Tina Walia. Thank you. These candidates are campaigning for the two open seats for four year terms. And they will be making their opening statements in reverse alphabetical order. After the opening statements, the candidates will respond to questions in a randomized order. Candidates, we so appreciate your willing to participate in this virtual forum tonight. Before we begin, I would like to highlight some ground rules that the candidates have agreed to observe during this forum. The League supports the accepted norms of civil discourse, and in that light, the candidates have agreed to follow those norms that were outlined in a document that they received. For example, candidates have agreed not to interrupt each other and to follow the allotted response times. Candidates are reminded that they don't have to use the full time allotment, but they are requested not to exceed the allotted time. This forum is scheduled to last approximately one hour. Each candidate will have 90 seconds to introduce her or himself by specifically answering this question in their opening statement. What qualifies you to be a Saratoga City Council member for a four year term? Our timer for tonight's forum is League member Wendy Hendry Welcome, Hen Wendy. She will give each candidate reminders as they answer questions about the time remaining and when time has elapsed, 30 seconds, 15 seconds, and then a stop sign. Candidates have been requested to end their sentence once the stop sign is displayed. After these opening statements, candidates will have 60 seconds to answer subsequent questions, which have been submitted through the registration process or developed by league members. The moderator will announce and enforce the time limits for each question. And lastly, the forum will close with the candidate speaking in reverse order from the opening statement, and they'll be answering this question. What question do you wish you had been asked tonight and why? And candidates will have 90 seconds to respond for their closing statement. And now let's officially begin. We will begin with each candidate's open and sta opening statement responding to this question. What specifically qualifies you to be a Saratoga City Council member? Candidates will have 90 seconds to respond and we will begin with Tina Walia. Hello everyone. Thank you for coming and thanks to the League of Women Voters. My name is Tina Walia. Saratoga has been home to my family for 19 years. It's a place to live, a place to love, a place we all call home. I've had the honor and privilege of serving Saratoga for over 10 years now as a planning commissioner. I've gone to every neighborhood in over 400 site visits. I've spent almost half of this time in appointed leadership, twice unanimously elected chair and twice vice chair of the planning commission. Besides emergencies like COVID-19 and wildfires today, Saratoga's character as a small town with open spaces that we all cherish 
it is at risk from state laws that are taking decision-making out of our hands. Change is inevitable. However, Saratogans should be able to decide their future without state interference. I want to represent Saratoga's interests and that is why I'm standing for election. I'm the only candidate with the unique set of qualifications in business and architecture combined with my 10 years of serving the community, including its businesses. Strategic leadership is required in these difficult times and focus is required ahead. I will bring more transparency to the city council. I represent only Saratoga's interests. I have stated very clearly my campaign is funded only by Saratoga residents, not by any developers or outside Saratoga money, including Thank I haven't you. taken. Thank you. Our next candidate with your opening statement is Renee Pacquier. Good evening, and thank you, Eleanor, Sophia, Wendy, and the League of Women Voters for allowing me this opportunity and to my fellow candidates. It is an honor to be with you here today. My name is Renee Pacquier, and I hope to be your next representative and voice on the Saratoga City Council. As some of our community mem members may have already read on my website, reneeforsaratoga.com, I have a long track record and true passion for serving my community. Whether it's delivering weekly meals with the RIDE program to our seniors who are isolated and alone due to COVID or educating the next generation of our workforce and youth as a Dean at West Valley College or helping to create new programming and safe recreational spaces in my role as the chair of the Parks and Recreation Commission, or serving as a deputy sheriff and becoming the first Farsi speaking female police officer in all of Northern California after the tragic events that took place on 9-11. I have firsthand experience and knowledge about our community and a deep commitment to finding out what the needs of our community are and taking the steps necessary to meet those needs. I believe that I have the leadership experience and communication skills that our community members deserve and what our city needs. And I respectfully ask for your vote in November. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our next candidate is Cookie Fitzsimmons. Great, thank you. <clears throat> I'd like to thank the League of Women Voters for this opportunity for the community to learn more about all of us. I am Cookie Fitzsimmons. I'm currently a Saratoga Planning Commissioner with more than six years experience and a community leader with 30 years of volunteer service in Saratoga. My current profession is in clinical research. My work involves budgets of over $20 million. Previously, I was a small business owner in Saratoga Village for 15 years. I've seen the village develop over the decades and still retain its charm. Some of my activities were acting as president of the Village Merchants Association, a worker on the Highway 9 cleanup project, preparing meals for Stop Hunger Now, and working with our most vulnerable neighbors, such as senior citizens with the organization, Rebuilding Together Silicon Valley. You may already know me personally for my involvement and deep commitment to serving our beautiful Saratoga. You know of my integrity, fairness, and enthusiasm. I believe in community feedback and a transparent government. As a council member, some of the things I will do are number one, protect our semi-rural atmosphere, cultivate and promote local business and ensure fiscal responsibility and a balanced budget. To find out more about me, go to electcookiewithak.com. Thank you. Thank you. Our next candidate, John Fitzpatrick. Good evening and thanks to the League of Women Voters for uh, inviting us all here tonight. And thank you everyone for joining us. I'm really excited to be here and uh, to serve the community that I grew up in uh, as a candidate first and uh, and hopefully as your next city council person. I, uh, I believe my education and career path have prepared me the most to lead in this, these challenging times we face right now. We're recovering from the pandemic. We need to prepare for wildfires as that is a, a new reality. And we need to stop, as, as my fellow candidate Tina said, stop the state from taking our power away when it comes to local decisions as far as where we'll build and, and who we want to to serve. And I believe that it's time for new ideas on our city council. I think that I, as a attorney, I'm the most prepared to uh, and, and able to make the kind of changes that we'll need to address the unique circumstances we now face. And, and I don't think that uh, that anybody has the, the exact type of skills that I do that um, to bring to the table. Uh, if you want more information on my campaign, you can 
visit my website, John Fitz for Saratoga. Dot org. That's J O H N F I T Z F O R Saratoga.org. And I'm also available by email to answer any questions you might have. The highest priorities for me are. Thank you very much, John. Thank you. Our next candidate, Doug Case. Thank you to the League of Women Voters. Um, I wanted to introduce myself as Doug Case, candidate for the council. Um, I come to um, Saratoga after my wife and I looked at many different areas and we chose Saratoga for its charm and schools. I love the mountain biking in Fremont Older as well. It's right in our backyard. Um, we've raised three daughters in our neighborhood and they've enjoyed the incredible schools and um, biking and playing in the area because it's safe and it's a great community. I was an AYSO coach for 15 years, coaching girls to, in building confidence and skills on the soccer field. I've actively participated in the public schools years of my of the three daughters that were um, going to school here, and additionally have participated in the Saratoga Federated Church service days and building houses in Mexico. Um, I've instilled in our daughters a broader worldview, and they've actually taken this to remote places uh, such as L.A., New Jersey, Africa, and even China. So to me. Um, I'd, um, I've spent the last few months meeting a lot of residents in their neighborhoods and in the village over lunch and coffee. And it appears their common concern are all related to communications breakdown on major issues. We have major issues coming down from Sacramento and we need to work together. Each neighborhood is a puzzle piece in a greater picture. And to do what's best for Saratoga, I believe with my 35 years of experience across multiple industries in the tech industry, I can apply solutions that will make everybody happy and make Saratoga great again. Thanks. Thank you. Our next candidate and our last opening statement, Bilal Aftab. Thank you. And uh, I want to start off by thanking the League of Women Voters for hosting this forum. This has been a really tough year for all of us. With everything from COVID-19 to wildfires in the hills, we've learned that the problems of tomorrow cannot be solved by the same old solutions of yesterday. We need a fresh perspective and competent leadership to carry us forward. So what makes me qualified to do just that? I have local experience in our city government in serving on the Traffic Safety Commission, where my fellow commissioners elected me as chair this year. We have actioned over 60 locations in Saratoga to make our roads safer and more accessible for all ages. I also bring regional experience to the table, which is critical as the council must constantly work with neighboring cities and agencies. I am the vice chair of the CAC for the Trans Bay Joint Powers Authority, where I've worked across 11 regional agencies to build the next generation of the Bay Area's transit infrastructure. I also have significant private sector experience. My day job is to work with businesses and nonprofits learning how to operate in both an offline and online world. In my past life, I've also advised local governments in California and Fortune 500 companies on keeping a balanced budget. But above all else, what makes me qualified for the city council are the community and neighborhood values I was raised with here in Saratoga. It's time for fresh ideas and new leadership, and I'd be honored to have your vote. If you want to learn more about me and my campaign, feel free to visit my website at BilalforSaratoga.com. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, candidates. We will now move on to questions that have been submitted through the registration process or developed by league members. The candidates will have 60 seconds to respond to each questions. And the candidates will respond to these questions in a randomized order so that everybody has the opportunity to go first or last, depending on your perspective. Um, and we are going to begin, and each time that uh, I'm going to ask a question, I'm going to identify the person who is going to respond first so that you have at least 15 seconds or so to think um, before you begin responding. So our first question, and uh, Cookie Fitzsimmons is going to be the first person. If elected, what specifically would be two or three of your top priorities for the city of Saratoga? Um, good question. So there are two top priorities that 
Uh, number one is financial and number two is safety. I feel we have a track record on both of those where uh, we are in good shape with both of those. The other priority I think we have is with the affordable housing and with the El Paseo development. I think we need to pay really close attention to those and work really hard um, at doing the best we can to contain those situations. Thank you. Next, Doug Case. Thanks for the question. The, my top two priorities are, <clears throat> we're, I'm worried about the Sacramento mandates around SB 35, which uh, require high density housing. And um, in my opening, I talked about puzzle pieces. Well, every neighborhood is affected by any growth in the city. But if it's for the better good of the city, we need to accommodate and collaborate with each of the neighborhoods and bring that housing in because we have service people that help in the neighborhood. Those are emergency service people that are there and ready to help our seniors. Many people in this community are seniors. The second priority I have is downtown village businesses. They are on the brink and there's not much activity down there. And so I would propose a collaboration between the chamber, the council and the businesses to promote the business events and uh, new uh, areas so that other businesses, especially retail wanna join our community downtown village. Thanks. Thank you. Next, Tina Walia. There are two immediate priorities. We have to look at what's going on with the COVID-19 situation, both for our senior citizens and for our businesses. The second is of course, the risk of the wildfires. With the immediate issues taken care of, the long-term issues for me, the biggest one is the state laws that are controlling and overriding our city's character in terms of how we grow as a city, how our neighborhoods are impacted. That is very critical to anything and everything that impacts the quality of our life. The second one is the fiscal responsibility and long-term business revitalization in the village and other commercial areas. If we can save those commercial areas from Sacramento laws. The third one is transparency in our processes. I have worked on all of these. I have 10 years of track record. I have an MBA. I have a degree in architecture and I have a proven track record that you can see on the planning commission videos from the last 10 years. Thank you. Bilal Aftab. Thanks. My three priorities are public health and COVID-19, community safety and transparency and financial responsibility. I'll go down one by one. Uh, on the public health and COVID front, one in five of our residents is above the age of 65 and at a very high risk. And as the city and our state begin to reopen, we have to be very sensitive to make sure that we look after their needs because this council will be playing a critical role in what the next four years of Saratoga will look like. Second is community safety. And from here, I have a three-part plan on wildfires, crime, and traffic. Because as we're all breathing in terrible air today, this is only going to keep on going. And we need to be thoughtful about how we're protecting our residents, especially those most vulnerable. And last but not least, underlying all of this is transparency and financial responsibility. I also agree with all of my fellow candidates on the threat that we have from Sacramento in terms of losing local control. And we need to do a better job as a city of communicating both what we're spending our money on, as well as what's coming down the path that's going to affect our neighborhoods. Thank you. Thank you. Next, Tina, well, I'm sorry. Uh, next is Renee Pacquier. Thank you, Eleanor. Um, top, I would say three issues if I have the honor of being elected. Um, economic recovery and support for our local businesses, including working on a strategic plan uh, created in partnership with, I believe, a much needed economic and community recovery commission um, that would have members of the community to give us their feedback and input. Improve safety and disaster preparation, especially in the area of communication to our residents. As many of the residents saw, there was some miscommunication that was had and that created a lot of unnecessary stress um, to our community. And lastly, continue work on improving the quality of life for all of our community members, especially our seniors, and celebrating the diversity that we have in our lovely community. Thank you. Thank you. And next, John Fitzpatrick. The top two priorities for me would be responsible growth and better emergency responsiveness. Under responsible growth, I think we need to uh, 
we need more than just smart development, but, but any kind of development can be smart if it's done the right way. I think if we protect open space, uh, we'll when better utilize the existing areas that we have, we can uh, protect the uh, scenery of Saratoga for the next generation. And uh, under responding to emergencies, I would say we need to limit the, uh, the, the state from taking away our power as far as housing decisions are concerned. We need to reduce the noise from 85 before they build any more there. We need to leverage our negotiating power in the buying power we have as a city to uh, have, negotiate better contracts for our water rates because right now those are hurting a, a lot of people. And I think the effect of that is being seen in yards or around the city. People can't afford to even water their, their lawn. So thank, thank you. you. Uh, and we're going to begin our next question actually with you, John Fitzpatrick. So you'll be going first. And the question is, there has been concern and controversy over proposed changes to the Saratoga retirement community. How do you stand on these proposed changes? Thank you so much for asking. That's really a, a great question. Uh, I think that communities like that are, are so wonderful for our for our city and they provide a great service to the people that live there. And uh, my, my concern is with the fact that they're doubling in size and th this would result in loss of uh, most of their open space areas and recreational areas and a very beautiful park that they have there. Uh, it would also alter the uh, side of the building there, which is a historical building. And uh, they found some sort of loophole to get the planning commission to approve that. But I, I don't think that, that that's good for that community. And I don't think it's good for Saratoga. So I would be opposed to that. Uh, just as I was opposed to the, um, the Palm Villas development. I think that they uh, rushed through that and ignored the fact that there was already a trail planned alongside that little section of creek. And uh, there's serious safety limitations with that facility. There's only one way in and you have mobility impaired residents who may have trouble getting out. So I have a, I have a concern Thank with you. the safety planning you know, that they have in place there. Thank you. Thank you. Our next candidate, Cookie Fitzsimmons. Thank you. So when presented with uh, different circumstances, I like to start with keeping an open mind. And I like to do the research as best as I can. I want to start with what I know and learn what I don't know. And I want to hear from all the stakeholders, what is fair, what is reasonable. So gathering information, positive or negative from the community is very important for me to gather data. I have read about the senior uh, retirement community. I've actually gone there in person and visited it. Um, it's one thing to read about it. It's one thing to actually be there in person. I was actually um, impressed, but not in a good way, of the um, plans for future development there. I was, I, I just could not believe the amount of growth they are proposing. So I, at this point, I do not support that project. I know they are working on it, um, things can change, but at this point, um, it just, that proposal does not fit that site. Thank you. Next, Doug Case. Thanks for the question. Um, I also visited the Palm, I mean, sorry, the uh, Saratoga Retirement Community and uh, was hosted by a couple of uh, very interesting men. They, uh, they have an alternative proposal, which, um, just seemed to make so much more sense. I spent about 10 minutes reviewing the, um, the graphics they sent. It was a one building solution. It didn't take away from the look of the manor or the palm trees or the open space where they have uh, picnics and bocce ball. Uh, it uh, was a very clever way to reconfigure the oversized health center uh, and then to put a larger cafeteria in the manor itself which would accommodate the growth needed uh, and the amortization of services so that everybody could uh, keep their rates low and, and still enjoy the facility. Um, unfortunately, I don't think any of those plans can be reviewed until a costly environmental impact report is done. And to me, that seems a little bit backwards. I think you should agree on a project and then do that um, Thank you. because the, the residents will have to pay for that. Thank Thanks. You. Uh, next, Tina Walia. 
Yeah, I have to give a disclaimer. As a sitting planning commissioner, I cannot comment on the specifics of the case because it is due to come to the planning commission. However, I can share with the need for housing in our city, the state laws coming in, we have to look at the city as a whole. We have to, at the same time, balance the needs of the seniors. What do they need? I have been involved with Lady Fatima. I have been involved with the memory care facility recently approved by the Planning Commission. I'm not going to discuss any specifics. What I can say is my 10 year track record speaks volumes about my system of working, which is doing things right. I always read all the information. I'm prepared. I am independent. I am a hard worker. I listen to the voice of the people. I ask the right questions. I always ask relevant questions. I take the time to listen to all the stakeholders and make the right decisions. Thank you. Bilal Aftab. Thanks, Eleanor. Uh, so much what some of, the, some of the other candidates have said. I think there's still a lot of information that we need to learn about here. Uh, based off the information I've seen to date, I don't think we should be proceeding with this development. Um, that being said, there is a lot more to come down the path in terms of the EIR and a lot of the information will go in front of the Planning Commission uh, where we will hopefully be able to get a more in-depth understanding of the true impacts. But based off the way it's currently proposed, uh, I think there's a lot more for us to learn and discover. Thank you. And next, Renee Pacquier. Thank you, Eleanor. Um, I agree. I think the way that it is currently being proposed, um, they actually the proposed changes have been done without input from their community. According to some of the community members that I spoke with, a last survey that was taken from their residents living at the SRC, approximately 80% of the residents disagree with the current proposal. And as some of my other fellow candidates have mentioned, they've actually come up with their own proposal and their own plans, which I think should be taken into consideration. It is imperative for the decision makers to listen to the residents and to understand the impact that this proposal will have on everyone. There is a safety issue here as well. There is only one ingress and egress, and there is, this is dangerous, especially in the events of an emergency. In a time when we are being threatened by wildfires and medical emergencies from COVID, increasing the amount of residents with the lack of allowing fire and safety to enter and leave and help residents evacuate safely is dangerous. I would like to thank all of the residents of the Saratoga retirement community whom have reached out to me and have engaged in a very informative discussion regarding this issue. Thank you. And Renee, we're going to begin our next question with you. I think you're seeing a pattern here. <laughs> um, some of you have referred to this already, but I'd ask you to be perhaps more specific. What one issue do you feel is the most important to work on for maintaining the rural and natural environment of Saratoga? Renee? I think one of the key here, things here, and I believe there's a, there's a uniform sense of that we want to keep, our community members want to keep this semi-rural um, and that we all value and, and cherish Saratoga and that's why we live here. I think one of the key things here, and this is what has been coming up with many, many of the discussions with the community members uh, and, and many of the different council and planning commission meetings is the lack of transparency. Um, and I wanna make sure in all decisions that we make within our community um, and to continue forward with this passion and to protect our city that we incorporate and listen to our community, listen to their voices and make sure that they have a voice at the table and when decisions are being made at the city government level. Thank you. Thank you. Next, John Fitzpatrick. Would you please repeat the question, Eleanor? Yes. What one issue do you feel is most important to work on for maintaining the rural and natural environment of Saratoga? I think that uh, responsible growth needs to be considered because uh, our open space areas will only be protected if we maintain them. And part of that is cutting back weeds. That's, I know that that's not really permitted in open space areas. So we need to figure out how to deal with certain problems like that so that we don't have to develop our hillsides and they can maintain you know, the same uh, beauty that they always have had. I think that it'd be great if we could maintain our tree canopy as one of my you know, fellow candidates has, has uh, pointed out, but 
the problem is that some some types of trees are are accelerant, like Italian cypresses, and, or they're positioned in in unhealth in uh, dangerous ways. So, you know, I think it's about balancing our interests and protecting you know when our open space and green areas when we can, but we have to uh, you know we have to balance the interests. Thank you. Thank you. Next, Cookie Fitzsimmons. Thank you. So what does it mean to be uh, semi, semi rural? That means less traffic, noise, congestion. Um, it means mostly no sidewalks or street lights. It means a tree canopy. Um, it means beautiful hillsides. How do we maintain that? That's, for me, my experience on the planning commission mostly recently, the biggest downfall we have is in our uh, transparency issue. I have some ideas on how to better improve transparency, um, beginning with making documents more available to more people and to have more complete uh, and uh, uh, more complete and thorough communication. I believe in people having making informed decisions and that means getting information um, in a timely manner so that people can make an informed decision. Thank you. Next, Doug Case. Thanks, Eleanor. Yeah, it's, um, it's why a lot of us moved here so long ago and why a lot of other cities want to be like Saratoga. It's because it's, it's a planned community to be semi-rural. A large part of our operations budget is for parks and open space. And that's what we all love. Um, as John mentioned, there are certain things that are very dangerous if we don't take care of it. And that's, you know, the tree canopy does have fuel ladders under it that can uh, wreak havoc in our hillside communities and neighborhoods. What, um, what I think we need to do is have a comprehensive presentation of what's happening from Sacramento in the mandates for high density housing, which doesn't necessarily fit into a bedroom community like Saratoga, but other cities um, have had to fight it before and have had to defer it. And I think we can learn a lot from Cupertino on the Valco project, for instance. And I think we have to collaborate with, Sar with Sacramento to make sure that we just don't take a one size fits all in Saratoga. Thanks. Thank you. Next, Tina Walia. Boy, am I the person to deal with this problem? I have the experience, the understanding, the focus. I believe this is what we should have been working on. We lost Keto Center because we were not prepared. With my experience as an architect, as a business analyst and an MBA, I believe what I can do is look very closely at our general plan and the city rules and regulations that we can fortify ourselves to minimize the damage to our city. Completely agree with what has been said by Cookie earlier. It is the low density that combined with the other things she talked of that makes Saratoga the beautiful small town city that we all love to live in. I can do it for you. We do need to work with Sacramento, find ways to figure out that they need to understand our needs. We can do it. I promise you, I will. It's not an election promise. This is what I have done for 10 years. You can see my record in the videos from the 10 years. Thank you. And Bilal Afta. Thank you, Eleanor. Uh, I think the highest priority item here is actually how we think about local control. Uh, one of my, my favorite maxims growing up has always been, if you don't have a plan, that's a plan in of itself, and it's usually not a very good plan. Uh, the reason I share that is, I think we as a community need to come together and communicate and understand the impact that the lack of local control is gonna have. What that means is setting up some sort of commission appointed by the city council that includes uh, residents of our city and various commissioners to have a conversation about the lo about local control and changes in Sacramento so that we as a city can form a plan. What that'll also do is get at what everyone here is talking about, which is transparency. Transparency with what's coming down the path and what we as a city are doing to combat. Thank you. And you are going to begin our answering of the next question, Bilal. Great. Uh, and it relates to the housing issue. This was one of the prime questions that came in and you've all alluded to it. You're all probably familiar with the infamous SB 50 that eventually did not pass, but SB 35 did. And in particular, this question came up a number of times. 
Uh, does SB 1120 fit your vision for Saratoga? Why or why not? And we'll begin with Bilal. And if you're not familiar with that legislation, I can give you a brief update on it. Um, basically, it's about affordable housing. It's the ability for duplexes to be uh, for single family dwellings to or single family residential zoning to permit duplexes to be built. And let me see, I've written some notes about it. Um, and also they have specified subdivision maps where again, uh, more dense housing can be, uh, can be built. And basically it's saying that if the town does not have a policy that already addresses this, that they can come in and use what's called ministerial approval and approve these complexes. So basically that's a very brief outline of SB 1120. There's a lot more in it than what I'm saying, but that's a very right. brief overview. So Bilal. Sure, uh, thank you, Eleanor. And thank you for that overview as well. Uh, my, my stance is aligned with the previous question as well, which is this is just another attempt from Sacramento to try and assert control uh, of cities like Saratoga. And this, is, this sort of underscores the importance of us you know, coordinating with our residents to educate them on what's coming down the path and also to organize alongside with them. One of my asks is actually not just for us as candidates to talk about this and not just for the city council to talk about this, but for our residents to also be engaged and to stay engaged and to also go talk to their state assembly members and their state senators so that they understand that we as Saratoga residents don't want rules like this and laws like this that will come here and take away what makes Saratoga so beautiful, which is our tree canopy, our, sem our tree, a tree canopy, our semi-rural character, the things that attracted my parents and my family here and what makes us want to stay here. Thank you. Next, Renee Pacquier. Thank you, Eleanor. I agree with uh, the city of Saratoga and our council that uh, with resolution 20-050 uh, stood up against um, and in opposition to Senate Bill 1120. Uh, Senate Bill 1120 and SB 50 basically come down to our city losing local control. I am not against housing. However, it shouldn't be housing for the sake of housing. And we need to make sure that we don't lose our local control. We need to make sure that we have community input. We need to make sure that when decisions like this are being made, they are being made for the community and from the community. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, John Fitzpatrick. Thank you for the question, Eleanor, and the description of, of this law. I agree with my um, fellow candidates that this is an attempt by Sacramento to usurp our local control and uh, like them or not, lawyers know the law. And I don't think there's any candidate that's more prepared to find creative ways to address the fact that we're, we've lost the kind of skills that um, you know, being a planning commissioner would help uh, on the city council are becoming increasingly less useful because of the loss of you know, discretionary review processes such as this. Uh, and also what is allowing keto market, you know, to become high density housing and other state law like this, that's, um, you know, taking away our control from um, deciding what's in the best, best interest of Saratoga and our residents rather than, you know, pleasing some housing quotas. On the other hand, we're a part of an association of barrier governments that has a, a certain set goal of housing units that we've um, agreed to provide uh, by you know, certain metrics in certain years. And I don't think that we're on track to, to meet those goals. So we need to figure out ways to address that. Thank, Thank you. you. Next, uh, Cookie Fitzsimmons. Thanks, Eleanor. Um, I, I agree with what has been said uh, previously. Um, this is not a good idea and this plan does not solve our um, inventory problem. Um, perhaps uh, I am most intrigued by the ADUs and uh, our work with that on the Planning Commission. I think there's opportunity with the ADUs to increase our housing inventory. Um, so imagine, for example, um, a family uh, raising their family um, and now the children have moved away and now the parents are living in a huge home. Um, perhaps having um, an ADU at that site where the parents could now live in the ADU and then maybe they could rent out the house. 
So what was once a wonderful use for raising a family, um, maybe that need, uh, it's not such a good need matching to that house. And not, why not shift things around and increase our housing inventory um, by doing that? Thank you. Doug Case? Thank you. Yeah, I, as, as all the candidates have said, we do have Sacramento pushing a one size fits all into our community. And Saratoga does not have Netflix. It does not have Apple. We do not have Google. But all those companies have hired tens of thousands of employees and along with them come service people. And service people are in our community helping us with fires, um, deputies with um, crime and safety and emergency medical services people. So we do need to add housing. It just needs to be done responsibly and it needs to be well thought out. Adding ADUs is fine intra-family, but that doesn't accommodate net new families coming in and being able to go to the schools. Some of the schools are at risk of closing down now because young families can't afford to live here. And we need to participate in that. We need to collaborate and we need to learn from these other communities so that we have a diverse community uh, of good neighbors and um, good services. Thank you. And Tina Walia. So as a trained architect, I believe in growth. I do believe in balanced growth maintaining the character of the city. For Saratoga, that means low density, semi-rural, small town atmosphere. The simple answer to your question, Eleanor, is no. I do not support these bills coming out of Sacramento. They do not support Sacramento. They do not support Saratoga's character. The people who live in Saratoga are here for the open spaces. The affordable housing is meant for nurses, teachers, and firefighters. That is great, but what is happening in the name of these legislation is maximizing developer profit. At Keto Center, there is practically no commercial area left. The developer has come up with 91 luxury town home. 90% of the 91 units are luxury condos there and town homes. That is not what affordable housing is meant for. The last housing element I was involved with as a commissioner, we accommodated for accessory dwelling units and recently have added junior accessory dwelling units on Thank a single you. family plot. Thank you. And you'll actually, actually all of you will be responding to the next two questions. I mentioned this as we were getting ready. It is, we, I'm going to ask you for yes or no answers. So the first one is, please raise your hand if you are supportive of the California ballot proposition 15, also known as the schools and community first ballot measure that the league does support and would create a split role property tax and generate additional money for the town and schools. Please raise your hand if you're supportive of that proposition. Thank you. And the next question, very similar to that. Please raise your hand if you are supportive of Proposition 16 that the league supports and which would amend the state's constitution to allow the use of race, gender, color, ethnicity, and national origin in public education, public employment, and public contracting. Thank you. Okay, our next question. Let me see what's going on here. And we'll begin with Tina. Where do you feel diversity in Saratoga is an important issue? And please define diversity of what it means to you. Great question, Eleanor. Diversity is something we see in Saratoga all the time. We have age groups from little children, young families with little children. And then I have neighbors who are in their 90s and living independently. This is absolutely beautiful. This is what makes our neighborhoods with different age groups, different demographics, different ethnicities. We are a culture with a lot of diversity in Saratoga. And what brings us together is how we love Saratoga, how we love these open spaces. It is an important issue. And I think Saratoga is a great role model in a lot of ways to be a wonderful, happy, diverse community in a small town in California, in the Bay Area. We are very unique here. Thank you. Thank you. Next, Bilal Aftab. Thanks, Eleanor. Uh, 
Diversity is one of my favorite parts about Saratoga and just something that's also very personally important to me. Uh, one of the things I've always appreciated within the city of Saratoga is the interfaith community. Um, I'm a member of the West Valley Muslim Association, but I've always been really enjoyed the fact that that organization, you know, in, in, in working with the city, really gathers a lot of different uh, religious organizations to get together every year and hold different gatherings like we do um, around the holidays. And so I really appreciate that. Um, I myself have actually started the Interfaith Community Group at a company I work at, where we bring people together from different backgrounds and, and we talk about what unites us and what brings us together. Um, I think the diversity that we have from a religious and ethnic perspective is one of the most beautiful things about Saratoga. And it's one of the things that I think makes us not just a local city, but a truly global city, because we have so many people from so many different backgrounds. Thank you. Next, Renee Pacquier. Thank you. I love this question. And if I may, I would love to add not only diversity, but inclusion. Um, we, we actually have a, we have a beautiful city and a lot of times people outside of the city don't know how diverse we are. Um, and it's not just the diversity as Bilal just mentioned in the different ethnicities and people from all over the world, but in religions and in, in thoughts, uh, you know, viewpoints, um, in, uh, in, in gender perspectives, um, as the only candidate that is uh, endorsed by um, BAMEC, the um, Bay Area Municipal Elections Committee, I'm proud to say that I'm a champion of diversity and inclusion. Um, I have hosted uh, events, community events, not only within the city, but on the college campus. Um, I think our diversity is something to be celebrated um, and it is something and an area for us to grow actually as a council. We need to do a lot more of our programming around our diversity and to make sure that our uh, planning and our recreational activities are more inclusive of this diversity as well. Thank you. Thank you. Next, John Fitzpatrick. Thank you, Eleanor. Yes, I agree. This is a very important issue. And uh, for me, I, I believe you can't judge anyone unless you've walked in their shoes. And the variety of life experience that I've had has taught me a lot about what, uh, you know, what it, the different types of experiences that our world has to offer. And, and uh, you know, I, I, I went to UC Berkeley, where uh, it, it's also a very diverse uh, community. Uh, somewhat different from our own here. And I think talking to people and really getting to know them and understand what is important to them can bridge those gaps. Like my fellow candidate Bilal said, uh, faith is important in that I think, and it can bring people together, uh, you know, as much as uh, it has often pulled people apart. But I think we need to focus on, you know, the positive and, and bringing people together. So um, that's, uh, that's what I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, Cookie Fitzsimmons. Hey, thanks, Eleanor. Um, I, I enjoy diversity. I welcome diversity. It's um, age groups, demographics, ethnicity. Uh, diverse, uh, diversity is character to me. I enjoy it. I enjoy cultural exchanges and all of the events that we have. Um, I welcome it. Thank you. Doug Case. Thanks for the question. Um, I think in our community, Saratoga, we, we have a diversity of workers, families, and seniors, but it does tend towards high-tech workers. And um, there's other types of uh, talent in, in, um, in our community that does contribute quite a bit. And that would include firefighters, um, our safety officers, school teachers, and it's, it's challenging for them to live in this community. So I think we need to listen to them and try to help uh, integrate them into our um, wonderful community and, and not just think that we're the only ones that do high tech. I come from 35 years in high tech. I learned to be curious, not judgmental, because that's how you meet the most interesting people and you learn and develop the most um, diversity and ideas. Thanks. Thank you. The next question. Uh, is actually one that came in for a number of people in different formats. Basically, the question is, what can be done about the exorbitant water rates that Ca Saratoga residents are faced with on a monthly basis? And we will begin with Doug Case. Thanks for the question. Yeah, I, I attended some of these uh, water district meetings um, held by, um, initiated by Rishi. 
And it was really, it was really fascinating. It really brought out the community to, to get involved in that. Um, I was also shown some bills uh, from the 70s and 80s that included infrastructure fees. And the people that showed me those bills were quite dissatisfied with the investment made in reservoirs. Some of the reservoirs aren't even a, capable of handling more than 50% of capacity. So in an arid environment with 40 million people now in the state of California, we need better management of our natural resources through reservoir management. And I don't think that's been done. Not that I have a lot to say about it as a Saratoga councilman, but you know, working with the Santa Clara County supervisor like Mike Wasserman, who's endorsed me, and others in the uh, assembly and even state Senate, we need to make it heard that these rates aren't gonna get any better and we need better planning and vision at the, at the upper levels. Thanks. Thank you very much. I do wanna stop for a moment because Renee Pacquier, your video has been turned off, I would assume. Thank you. Okay, just wanted to make sure you were still with us. Uh, our next person to answer will be Tina Walia. Yeah, hi, that has been quite an issue in Saratoga, a lot of people have been impacted with the very high water rates. The challenging situation is the city council in Saratoga does not have direct control over the utility or the private company, San Jose Water Company, that charges us for these water rates. Having said that, it doesn't make it easy. It's actually very difficult, especially for seniors on a fixed income. What Recently, I have seen is a council member getting involved and trying to get the voices of the people heard. I think that is very important. We have to represent our people, the citizens of Saratoga, the ones who are impacted with the high water rates. Like everything else, I look at an issue very closely. I get into the details of it, analyze it, listen to the people. It's your voice that matters. And I will continue to do that if I'm given the opportunity to look at it. Thank you. Thank you. Bilal Aftad. Thanks, Eleanor. I think we have to think about this in three ways. The first thing is, uh, as other candidates have mentioned, how do we organize as a community to voice our concerns around these rate increases? And that's primarily because, as Tina mentioned, we don't have a lot of control over these sorts of things, but our voices can be very powerful and we can lever leverage the public uh, media sphere to make a difference. The second is we have to push for regional and state solutions. We have to work at the county at the state level, as Doug mentioned, to really think about um, how are we thinking about our long-term water planning? Because the reality of it is that there is a finite amount at this point in time with our within our current infrastructure setup, and that's only going to get worse, right? And the third thing that, that this comes to, and this is how it affects us as a city, a city council in particular, are we have to be that much more thoughtful about if and when we are going to develop and allow for any more houses to be built, because that will also result in more water usage and our rates going up. Thank you. Next, Renee Pacquier. Thank you, Eleanor. It's interesting because as a community member, I remember seeing this in the San Jose Mercury News as an issue starting in 2016. We've had representation with the water district since 2016 and the you know, concerns of the citizens going um, to the San Jose water district to 2016. I think we need a little bit of a stronger voice. And I think what's important here is that we work with the water district. We need to find solutions. We need to work with the water, work on the water rates and work together. Um, I, I'm not sure why the uh, current representation or why since 2016, we haven't seen much of an improvement. But what I do know is that there is a lot of concern and water bills are doubling, if not tripling. And this is something that we need to address and we need to address right away. Thank you. Thank you. John Fitzpatrick. Yes, thank you for asking about this important issue. And I would agree with what my fellow candidate Bilal said about needing to uh, develop regional and state solutions to this issue. It's really a matter, I think it's reflective of like he said, poor planning and the circumstances we're now finding ourselves in, in terms of a drought year. And uh, so it, there's no easy answers to this, but I do think that we could do a better job of considering alternatives and uh, uh, trying to develop uh, a plan to address these issues that it, it doesn't just uh, defer responsibility to another district. I think that together as residents, if, uh, 
if we come together and le leverage our, our purchasing power, why can't we put all of our contracts and uh, water contracts into one provider, the, the more competitive of the two? What's stopping us from doing that? We have two providers that, that service this utility in, in Saratoga, the Valley Water and the San Jose Water Company. Why are we doing that? Thank you. Thank you. And Cookie Fitzsimmons. Great, thanks, Eleanor. So this is an interesting uh, question. I, I, I read on nextdoor.com that some rates are going up 200 and 300%. And that is anecdotal uh, information, right? And I have my own anecdotal information and I kind of geek out on data a little bit. Um, I mean, research. Uh, so um, I've been tracking uh, not only my water, but my PG&E for the last three years, just because I find it's interesting. And what I found out is that in um, my water increased 6% in 2019 and it increased 7% in 2020. So that is my anecdotal story. Um, it is quite discrepant from others who are getting two and three hundred uh, times percent more. So my next step on that would be to find out why the difference and actually to look at the data in total and, um, and analyze it there to somehow describe the discrepancy. Um, another thing to look at um, are billing practices and um, just a, a shout out or a thumbs up to uh, Rishi for all of his work that he's been doing uh, representing um, Saratoga's Voices. Thank you. Thank you. Candidates, that's the end of the questions that came in from the community. And we're going to move on to closing statements. And as was mentioned before, this will be your last question and your closing statement. What question do you wish you had been asked tonight and why? This is an opportunity for you to bring out some information about yourself and your campaign that perhaps did not come out in the questions that were already asked. So I'll repeat it again. What question do you wish you had been asked tonight and why? And we will go in reverse order from the opening statements and we will begin with Bilal Aftab. Thank you, Eleanor. Uh, I want to start off again by thanking the League of Women Voters for hosting this forum tonight. It's been remarkably informative. I also want to thank all the other candidates for stepping up and running. I think we're all here because we care and we love our city. Uh, and I, I really appreciate all of you for doing that. Um, I also have a message to all the residents out there. If you do want to get involved in the city, we actually uh, would love for you to get involved. There are three commissions that have openings right now, heritage, traffic safety, and parks and recreation. Go on the city's website to learn more. The question was, what question do you feel was asked today or, or that that wasn't uh, that asked in, in the forum? No forum will ever be enough time to discuss all of the issues. And that's because a city council term is four, year, four, four years, right? There are going to be so many things that come up. So the question I have for myself is, what values will I use to make the decisions that come in front of the city council? And the values that are important to me are community, transparency, and gratitude. Community, because that's what Saratoga is to me. I grew up here, I played sports growing up here, and my, my family continues to be here. Transparency. Transparency underlies all of this. If we can make sure that our citizens understand what the, our local government is up to, that makes that much, it, it allows for more effective government. And last, but certainly not least, is gratitude. To appreciate that which has come before us and that which everyone has worked to make Saratoga so beautiful. Uh, thank you so much, and I appreciate um, all of you for coming out tonight. Thank you. And I'll remind the candidates that you have 90 seconds for your closing statement. And next we will go on to candidate Doug Case. Thank you to the League of Women Voters for hosting this. It was uh, very well done. Um, I'd also like to thank my wife, Tina, for all her help and support and my friends and family who've encouraged me to do this. I'm humbled by your confidence in me. The question that um, I, I think uh, would have been interesting if someone asked me is, um, is what's, what's happening when I talk to people uh, in the village and over coffee, you know, how are you gonna handle everybody who is so concerned about their neighborhood, not in my backyard, but are so uninterested when it's not involving their neighborhood? Well, I mean, that's the challenge here, right? Um, you know, we've, ha we've had council members that have tried to solve this, they've tried to communicate and it's, it's hard. Um, we, Saratoga has a very good website talking about all the commissions, departments, task forces, and 
in sales, I learned to, to qualify, but also communicate with all parts of the organization, which means talking to the neighbors, talking to council members, talking to businessmen, talking to the chamber, and coming in with a solution that collaborates uh, with all the pieces of a puzzle. Everybody is a piece of a puzzle and very interested in their own piece, but they are connected. And to solve problems for the city, we have to solve it for what's best for Saratoga. Thank you. John Fitzpatrick. Yes, thank you, Eleanor, fellow candidates, and everyone who joined us. Uh, the, the biggest thing for me is, like Doug said, the responsible growth. And I, I, when I say that, I mean that we have to be able to provide the same Saratoga that we that I enjoyed growing up, the same place that had, for instance, a buy and save market that allowed you to come into the village often and, and helped, uh, you know, to to boost the foot traffic in the area. Uh, things like this could really improve our village atmosphere. I think if we had uh, live music again in a responsible, socially distant way, uh, we need things like this to restore our spirit, frankly, in, in the, um, the wake of COVID and these wildfires. And I think we need to be ready for the next, uh, the next challenges that we're gonna face. Uh, they're, they're presenting themselves faster than we can solve them. And they're not the kind of issues that there's any easy answers for, you know, when it comes to the wildfire haze that we saw recently that looked apocalyptic. Uh, we, we need to be able to deal with challenges that we haven't you know, seen before and we need new ideas and I will bring that kind of leadership to the city council. Uh, I have the ability to think independently. I'm a city hall outsider and uh, fairness and transparency are of the utmost importance to me. Actually, or just earlier today, I uh, sent a, a message to people and asked uh, why our city is withholding commission documents, for instance. Where those, those documents should be released to the public or be available to the public as soon as they're uh, given to commission members, yet Thank they're you not much. available online. Thank, Thank you. you. Next, we'll hear from Cookie Fitzsimmons. Thanks, Eleanor. And thank you so much to the League of Women Voters for having a wonderful forum. Thank you. Um, the question I wish you had asked is, many years from now, what do I hope for Saratoga? Uh, my answer is, I hope that we are willing to consider managed growth while we are still committed to maintaining what makes Saratoga, Saratoga. The semi-rural feel, the striving to maintain cultural enrichment with everything from concerts to programs at Montalvo, to the celebration of different cultures, to Saratoga Classic and Cool Car Show. I hope that we continue to be a community that takes care of children and seniors. I'm guided by my experiences in Saratoga and the knowledge that if we don't preserve the heritage and character of Saratoga, once it's gone, we probably cannot get it back. These are the things I want you to leave here knowing about me. I'm a lifetime Saratogan, Three generations of my family have called Saratoga home. I love Saratoga. I will work my hardest for you on city council. I invite you to visit my website to learn more about me. Go to electcookie with a K dot com. Thank you. Thank you very much. Renee Pacquier. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Eleanor, Sophia, Wendy, and the League of Women Voters. Thank you to my fellow candidates and to all of the community members who are here with us today and we'll be watching this recording. The question I wish you would have asked us tonight is, what have you done to serve our seniors, the most vulnerable population in our community? When it comes to the issues facing older adults, it's important not to just listen, but to also respond with intention and purpose. All of the issues we've discussed here today affect older adults, and I'm thankful to have the connections I'll need as a council member to give them the equity they deserve and their rightful spot at the table. Saratoga has one of the highest populations of older adults per capita in our county. If we want to preserve our community's charm and character, we need the solution to the issues we all face as we age. I am very humbled to have earned the trust of so many in the senior community over the years, and I'm very proud of my track record in service to older adults. If elected, I will build on that record of service and ensure that Saratoga continues to be a wonderful place to grow around family, neighbors, and friends. 
We need leadership whose knowledge is firsthand, not based on what other people have reported to them or what they have read in a report. I hope that I am this leader for you, my fellow Saratogans, and that I receive your vote in November. Thank you. Thank you. And Tina Walia. Thank you so much, League of Women Voters, for this opportunity for us to talk to the people of Saratoga. My one question that I wish you had asked me would be, what is the unique value add I bring to serve the citizens of Saratoga? I have talked numerous times about the credentials I bring, the experience, the commitment I bring to this city. I would humbly request the Saratogans to give me the opportunity, the honor to continue to serve you beyond the 10 years that I already have served. I don't have to share with you what my leadership skills are. That speaks in the voices of the people who are writing to me, unsolicited emails, unsolicited letters published in the Mercury News in the last 10 days. I bring leadership, I bring strategy. These are not buzzwords, these are not empty promises. I bring all of that based on my experience as a financial analyst at Applied Materials where I was dealing with an inventory of $600 million 20 years ago. Today, Saratoga's budget is 25 million, which is what I was dealing with 20 years ago was 20 to 25 times. A couple of excerpts from the letters published. Saratoga City Council needs Tina's experience and knowledge. With her expertise, due diligence and hard work, Tina Walia asks the right questions, insists on complete answers and listens to everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you candidates very much for your participation. We wish all of you well in your campaign and greatly respect your candidacy for these very important offices. Again, thank you for your participation. I particularly enjoyed tonight because I have a fond place in my heart too for Saratoga. I taught there for 20 years and uh, loved Saratoga School. Audience members, thank you for your attendance. We hope you have learned a lot tonight that will help you with your decision-making when you go to vote. The League would like to remind everyone to vote by November 3rd, 2020. We are so lucky here in Santa Clara County and actually all of California now that every registered citizen is able to vote by mail. You will be receiving your mail-in ballot in early October and can vote by completing your ballot and mailing it back in the postage paid envelope, completing your ballot and dropping it off in any secure vote box located throughout the county, or you can visit a vote center to drop off your ballot, to vote in person, to get a replacement ballot if needed, and even to register to vote conditionally that day. For additional information on candidates and ballot measures, please visit our website, the uh, website for the Santa Clara County League of Women Voters, which lists all candidate forms and all pros and cons. And we also do want to remind people that two other sources of excellent information. And I hope all of our candidates tonight have submitted your information to votersedge.org. Or another source that we use frequently is Ballotpedia, which presents very comprehensive and unbiased information. Lastly, we do want to remind you of two events that are coming up. Actually, I see three events here. Uh, we have a candidate forum for the Campbell Union High School Board on September 30th. On Monday, October 5th, we have a California ballot pros and cons presentation, which goes over the 12 state propositions, the three county measures, and there are some local measures that impact Los Gatos and the Campbell Union High School District. And then on October 7th, we have another Saratoga candidate forum, but this will be for the union school board candidates. So thank you very much everyone for attending and this concludes our forum. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Bye. Bye. Good night. Good night.